Okay, so it says a uh, solenoid is wound with some number of turns per length, um, and it's giving us the current and it's asking for magnetic field within the solenoid. Yeah, I think it all makes sense. Now, we do this question again, like with the other question, you could just look up the formula that, um, so the textbook derives the magnetic field due to solenoid. Although I don't know why they are doing it such a long way. There's a way to do it using Ampere's law. But anyways, oh, oh, yeah, and they do use the one using Ampere's law. So, so you could just use this, that's allowed. But I wanted to demonstrate how to derive this relationship from basic principles with the Ampere's law. So let me do representation of the solenoid. So when, when we say solenoid, what you should think of is a, like a coil of wire, almost like a spring, except that it's a carrying current and it's, a, you know, it uses the insulated wire so the current has to go through this. And the solenoid has a surprising um, degree of symmetry. This is one of those geometries where you didn't have in like you didn't have geometry like this for Gauss's law, but for Ampere's law, this geometry uh, gives you, I guess, the most uh, two most important symmetries is a translational symmetry. As you, um, if it's an infinitely long solenoid, as you translate it up or down, nothing changes. That's one, and it gives you a rotational symmetry. So about this uh, axis through the center of the solenoid. So you should imagine solenoid of a circular cross section. It doesn't work with any other cross section. For circular cross section solenoid, as you look at it, if you rotate it around, nothing changes. So so that's the setup. I'm just gonna draw some figures for illustration. So here, I, let's say current is going into the page. So at each point, this loop is looping like this is the place where current is going into the page and so on. And on this side, the current should be coming out of the page. So the current is flowing in this direction, the way I do it. Uh, all right, uh, let me stop before I confuse myself. <laughs> okay, so, so that's the solenoid. So solenoid is one of those geometries where you can use Ampere's law to drive the magnetic field. Uh, the law that says, when you have a loop defined, the Ampereian loop, the imaginary loop that you define to help you figure out the magnetic field, that V dot DL is equal to four pi Coulomb constant over C squared times I enclosed. Again, your textbook gives this set of coefficients this way as mu naught, and then I enclose this the same. And the connection between these set of coefficients and this is one, the Coulomb constant being related to the uh, permittivity of free space or the electric constant. And this relationship between speed of light and the uh, electric and magnetic constants. Um, I'll leave it there. Um, yeah, so you have to come up with a um, Amperian loop. And as you're doing that, I think it's uh, good to have some sense of the direction of magnetic field. So you have these loops of current, which you know, using one of the shortcut right hand rules, loops of current, which will generate magnetic fields that kind of looks like this. This would be what magnetic field due to, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, magnetic field due to a single uh, current loop. And it does take some imagination to figure out what the direction of the magnetic field inside the solenoid due to all these loops will be. I'll say that based on the two symmetries, again, the translational and the rotational symmetry, really the only direction of combined net magnetic field that makes sense is a straight magnetic field along the inside the solenoid that's consistent with the direction of single loop. And outside, uh, if there's going to be any magnetic field outside, it will be directed in this way. This way they are um, in a direction that's consistent with a single loop magnetic field. And so this is going to be the Ampereian loop that I'm going to define. I'm going to define it in such a way that inside the solenoid, 
my path goes in this direction. It's going along the same direction as the magnetic field. That's going to make some things easier because I'm looking forward to do computing B dot DL. And inside the solenoid, B dot DL is going to be super simple. Now, I can keep going in this direction for one because that's infinite. <laughs> and two, I need to close the loop somehow. I need to make this line segment a part of the loop. So one thing I can do is I can turn it 90 degrees and start going in some direction, 90 degrees. The reason I want 90 degrees is I want 90 degrees with the magnetic fields so that as I go along these portions of the loop, the chain B dot DL that I accumulate will be zero because 90 degrees, that product is zero. And here's the challenge here. Anytime you close the loop here, you have to worry about uh, what's going to be B dot DL here. And uh, your textbook takes one uh, route that I think it's a, a little bit less than rigorous. What I would prefer to do out here is just imagine going forever. Imagine going forever. And as some um, infinite distance away is when I will finally come and close the loop. I can do that mainly because as I go along this segment of the loop, I don't accumulate any B dot DL. So I can go out to an arbitrary distance from the solenoid without that distance affecting anything. And really what's important here is that out here at infinite distance away, whatever magnetic field might have been will have gone to zero. That I think I can argue from the solenoid looking like an infinite line from far away. So with this Amperian loop, we can finally apply Ampere's law. The left-hand side, the line integral of B dot DL, I think I can break it up into four segments. I have my segment one, two, and three, and four. And really what it comes down to is that the only segment that contributes non-zero B dot DL is here. Oh, I need to give this loop a height. Let's say it's of height H. So, um, so since uh, segment one is the only segment where this B dot DL isn't zero, I can say this integral B dot DL is B times the integral over segment one of DL. All the other segments, I've purposefully designed the loop so that they all vanish to zero. And this integral, it's simply H. So the left-hand side of Ampere's law is B times H. Now the right-hand side is going to have the coefficient and the current and closed. So what I need to do is I need to count up these uh, amounts of currents that's poking out. And this is where the parameter often given, some number of turns per meter or per length is useful. Uh, it's because each turn of the wire corresponds to each wire, uh, here not poking out, poking in. Um, yeah, yeah, it corresponds to each wire poking through the surface. So your I and closed so your I and closed, it's uh, really going to be the number of uh, turns in loop times the current through a uh, single uh, loop of wire. So, okay, so for the number of turns in loop, that's where you use this loop density because that's going to be the loop density times the length here or height H. So, with all of that, let me write out the right-hand side. So the right-hand side is going to be 4 pi ke over c squared times uh, this all written out, n times h times the current. And we see this beautiful cancellation of h. Good. So the magnetic field due to solenoid, just writing out the simplified version, is simply 4 pi ke over c squared times the loop dens winding density times the current. I think that's it. Um, oh, uh, and uh, just uh, for the sake of sign error, so uh, or making sure the signs are 
what it's supposed to be. So when you're counting the current and closed, whenever the current go in the same direction as n hat, um, it's a positive. And here the way you figure out n hat is okay. I got my Amperian loop going clockwise this way, direction of my thumb, that's my direction of the area element or the surface area that's going into the page. So here my n hat is into the page. Uh, that's in the same direction as the direction of current. So, so yeah, it's positive. So that's the expression for the magnetic field um, in this region. And I think I'm done. That's the magnetic field inside the solenoid. So let me just plug in the numbers. I have over pi times Coulomb constant divided by speed of light squared, and I have the other things, the number of turns per meter. So 2,900 turns is no unit, but I do have per meter. So meter raised to power minus one <laughs> times the current, uh, 8.4 ampere. And it should hopefully give me an answer in the unit of Tesla. Uh, there it is, Tesla's. Ah, so in millitesla's, it's a 30.6. And yeah, so if you came up on a question like this and you don't happen to have textbook reference handy to look up this derived expression, you can quickly drive it. I did this in like 10 minutes. You can quickly drive it using Ampere's law. And this is the demonstration.